Hey, welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is a YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic hauls, comic speculations, and stuff for my collection. I got an awesome haul for you. It is a massive dollar bin haul from two, one from a store and one from uh, like a private dealer. I don't know what he said. It wasn't really like a garage sale or whatever. It was an ad on Facebook Marketplace and he said he had boxes of comics and everything was a buck. So I went there and uh, found some great stuff. And I found some great stuff in that store. So before I get into this amazing dollar bin haul, do me a favor, smash that like button. Helps with the algorithm, that YouTube algorithm. It'll ensure that more people will see these videos. If you have any questions that we see, like what you see, you want to leave a comment or whatever, well then leave a comment. I'll get back to you accordingly. You like these type of videos, comic calls, comic speculations, comic book collections, comic book mystery boxes. You just love comic books in general. Guess what? You're at the right place. You're at the right channel. So do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. Smash that bell for notifications. All right. First two books I'm going to show you are not Dalvin books, but I figured I might as well just show them to you. Uh, it, they're from Second and Charles. This one was $2.99. This is Savage Dragon number 10, the newsstand version. I didn't even know this book existed. Now, I read Savage Dragon as a kid. Uh, I think I read up to like 102, whatever. That's when I stopped. And uh, I forgot about like this version. I don't know if it was only sold at the newsstand. It was basically like number 10 had this like, he had this contest. I remember entering this as a kid. Eric Larson, uh, creator and artist, writer of Savage Dragon, created, he had a contest to create a villain for the Savage Dragon. And I guess we would own the rights to it. And I remember as a kid, like, I entered it. I, I don't know whatever happened to it. It doesn't even matter. But the one that won was a silly character called, like, Lobster something. And that was on the cover. But this is, I will say this, this is a much sicker cover than the, the cover I remember of Savage Dragon. And this one goes for a bit. So happy to find that. And then this is kind of cool. This is a variant. This is Suicide Squad number nine. It's uh, the Jim Lee cover, but this is the amazing convention, comic convention variant, and it's a you know a black and white version of it. So that's pretty cool. All right, on to the Dalabin Hall. This is from a store that I've showed several books from. They are going out of business, and I've been uh, soon, I guess, and I've been just going there and going through the dollar bins, and I figured I'd give it one more shot and see if I could find anything cool. Beautiful Stories for Ugly Children, Volume 1. This is a cool book if you if you are familiar with the band Mr. Bungle. They used art from this comic, so that's pretty cool. Anytime I find it, super cheap, whatever, I'll, I usually can't help but to pick it up. Thunderstrike, number 21. This is pretty cool. An awesome homage to Avengers number one with like the updated heroes. So you got Thunderstrike instead of Thor, She-Hulk instead of Hulk, Iron, uh, War Machine instead of Iron Man, but you do have Ant-Man there. And then there's Loki. And then there's Loki. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Dr. Horrible, number one. This is uh, based on like a like a you, it was like predates YouTube, I think. I don't know. It had Neil Patrick Harris and Nathan Filon. Uh, it's kind of like a fun little short series or whatever, but I figured why not. This is kind of cool. Liberty Meadows, number 27, Hachi Machi. This is uh, Frank Cho's series that he did that kind of led to, um, he, it led to like all his work. You know what he got? He got famous off this series, and that's you know he was famous for drawing women, endowed women. Uh, you know, I could tell he was a big fan of the Rocketeer. I always felt like Frank Cho was drawing Jennifer Connelly. That that's just what the what I got from that. He watched he watched the movie rocketeer and he watched that other movie where her she's like locked in a store with i think the actor's name was like frank wiley there's like locked in a target and uh there's a great gif of her, her riding a like a mechanical horse you know one of those little like horsey rides a little kid the little quarter machine so yeah that's just my opinion i never talked to the guy i'm not gonna go up to him and say do you have a weird obsession with jennifer connelly <laughs> but maybe you might want to do that but I, I don't condone that. 
Unexpected, number 218. I just like picking up any of these kind of like monster horror books from DC, especially when I find them in a dial bin, and they're in amazing condition. And this is kind of a funny, weird cover with this this guy powerlifting this woman, this croc, not, not the croc, uh, what's his name? Oh my God, I totally forgot the uh, Batman villain. You know, that crocodile guy. Captain Confederacy, not something I would normally ever pick up, but I didn't realize that Epic... You know, Marvel Epic put out this series, so that's pretty weird. I'll have to take a look at that. Starbrand Finale, number 19. I, think I like finding last issues of series in dollar bins. And let me tell you, everyone loved the New Universe stuff. I'm kidding. Don't go, don't go blowing up the comments section where no one liked the New Universe. Yeah, no one liked it. I didn't either. It was a joke. Gen 13, Generation X, team up, number one. I actually got this if you watch one of my previous videos i got the j scott campbell cover and then this is the arthur adams variant that's kind of cool and it's kind of a fun thing too because if you look at old j scott campbell you could definitely see he was heavily influenced by arthur adams he ended up you know obviously having like his own look that everyone likes but i feel like his older work well this is arthur adams what we're looking at but you know what I mean. Okay, Smiley the Psychotic Button from Chaos. That's pretty cool. Yoga Hosers. I like buying movie adaptation stuff. This is a Kevin Smith, Smith film. This was not... I think this was pretty, like... No one liked this. <laughs> I don't know why I picked it up, but I did. Noble Causes, number five, starring Invincible. I thought that'd be pretty cool. Anything guest starring Invincible and other books from Image is worth getting if you find the doll bin. It's like in mint condition. So that's cool. I don't know why I bought this. Maybe because it's old. Champion Sports, number one. Join the winning team. The kid who beat the Oakland A's. The little racer. <laughs> that first hurdle. Oh, uh, he did not. Oh, there he is. I'm like, where is he? I'm assuming that's that guy. Everyone won, and then this guy. I guess he died. I don't know. All right. These are pretty cool in the dial bin. Astonishing Tales, number 20. That's cool. Astonishing Tales, number 19. Sorry, Kazar. Astonishing Tales, number 18. Gog. Slay them, slay them both. No. Kazar is the power and Kazar shall prevail. A monster stalks these streets. That's pretty cool. Kazar. Astonishing Tales number 17. Lord of the Hidden Jungle. Kazar. Number 17 versus the, the day you cross a Gemini is the day you finally die. Kazar. I, so I do have number 16. I showcased it in another haul. It's an awesome cover with uh, Kazar and I think the tiger's name is Zabu. And they're breaking through like what looks like a comic panel. It's a pretty awesome cover. Kazar, Astonishing Tales, number 15. And Astonishing Tales, number 14. So that's pretty cool. Nice little way to complete my Astonishing Tales series. I do thankfully have most of the keys and everything like that. So that's fun. Awesome thing to find in Dalbin. Some of them are better conditioned than others, but still cool. Amazing Heroes at number 46, Power Pack. I always like picking up these Amazing Hero books because sometimes there's like weird little previews in there that like make these things have a lot of value. I think, I don't know if this is considered the first preview appearance of Power Pack. It might have already been out already. I don't know. Infinity Inc. number one. I figured why not? That's pretty cool. This is the series that, um, McFarlane does a run on. That's like his first real run in comics. I I think. <laughs> so that's cool. He didn't do it on that one. That's Jerry Ordway. Heroes of Born number one Doomsday. I have actually found a bunch of these recently. I figured this is a good book to get because of the movie Avengers 5. It's going to be called Avengers 5 Doomsday. So that's pretty cool. And it's got Doctor Doom and it says Doomsday on it. No, I don't think... A Superman book with the word Doomsday on it, you know, starring Doomsday, not Dr. Doomsday, <laughs> uh, will you'll be able to trick people into getting those. This is actually pretty awesome. I can't believe I found this in the dial bin. It's not like it's worth like a ton of money, but it's a pretty historical book. Dark Horse presents number one 
Black Cross. This is Dark Horse Presents number one. That was like initial series that came out. This came out in 1986. This is, I could be wrong, but this is, could be, I think it is. I mean, it's definitely the first issue of Dark Horse Presents. But it might be the first actual Dark Horse Comics comic. So that's pretty cool. I'm happy to grab that, especially in the dial bin. It's in really nice condition. That's super awesome. All right, I only have a couple left of this first store, and then I'm going to show you the next group. Deathstroke number 60, the finale of the, the last issue of Deathstroke, the Deathstroke series in the 90s. This is a great book to find. I see prices for this kind of like all over the place from like 15 to 20 or et cetera. I figured that's a good one to get. Red Sonia number four. It's an awesome Mark. I almost thought it was David Finch, but then I realized those are Mark Silvestri eyes. I'm not saying it's his eyes. It's just how he draws his women. Uh, Mark Silvestri. Uh, this is a, an incentive cover. I saw, uh, I looked it up. I don't know. I started like going for like 30 or whatever. That's a good one to get. Anytime I see like Red Sonia, or, like Arthur Adams or any like the bigger name artists that I'm familiar with I'll, and it's in the dollar bin, I'm definitely going to pick it up. And then this is awesome to get in the dollar bin. And anytime I, I will grab these anytime I see them. Barbaric, number one. That's pretty awesome. This book picked up a bit because of, uh, you know, they're doing some kind of movie or cartoon or something. So there's excitement. And it is like an awesome, very violent take on like Conan. This axe, he, as you can see, this axe, I guess, is like sentient and it feeds off of the victims <laughs> or whatever you want to say. I don't know. All right. The next part. So that was like 25 books plus those two. And then I got like 44 or 45 books here. I don't know. So it was, like I said, they're all dollar in books. He threw in a couple extra. So it kind of brings it down. But technically, I don't know what, like 95 cents a book now. I don't know the math. Savage Dragon number 12. First appearance of the She-Dragon. Nothing too crazy, but I figured why not pick that up. Okay. Fantastic Four, 391. This book has, has picked up a bit over the time. Just There's a first appearance of some scroll, I think, in here. But really, it's just like that hom homage to Fantastic Four, 49, that I think makes this book a little more special. Pirates of Dark Water, number one. That's pretty cool. It does have this little bend here, but for a buck, it's in decent condition. Happy to grab that. This is pretty cool. Never had, I always see Amazing Man books in the dial bins, and it's always something that I'm like, I don't have any interest in this. But I heard that the last issue of the series had like, no, I don't think Frank Miller drew this. Well, it says FM on there, but that could be like, they're homaging Frank Miller, but it's around the time Dark Knight came out. So in a way, this issue, Amazing Man 12, is really Dark Knight number five. So just... Just saying, I'm not trying to create like a some buzz here using my U power of YouTube influence to influence the market of Amazing Man. But who knows? Now this book, which is like a one to four dollar book, I just made it now a twenty to fifty dollar book. You're welcome. I'm kidding. X Wolf, <laughs> X Men Fifty Two, first cameo appearance of Bastion. That's pretty cool. Decent condition. Punisher 99. I figured, why not? Towards the end of the series, the print runs a little bit lower, and they are more desirable. Captain Planet, number five. Really nice condition. Anytime you find any of these cartoon books, especially in the dollar bin, and they're in decent condition. Look, it says printed on recyclable, recycled paper. That's pretty cool. Someone wiped their butt first, and then Marvel said, let's print, let's use all that dookie toilet paper to make Captain Mark Planet and the Planeteers. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened. That's just uh, my theory. Take it with a grain of salt. Marvel Age 140 with this awesome Greg and Tim Hildebrandt Marvel uh, Spider-Man 2099 art. That's pretty cool. Speaking of Dark Horse Presents, I found issue two in there. So I figured, why not grab that? That is the second full appearance of Concrete. Concrete's first appearance is in that Dark Horse Presents number one I showed you. But it is his first cover appearance. And I remember as a kid seeing this in the stores and stuff, and I was always fascinated by this character. You know, because he kind of looks like the Thing a bit. I always say that he's like indie Thing. And they were talking about making a movie of this character for years, and there was talks of like 
Bill Murray was going to be him. I don't know. Obviously, it went nowhere. Captain America number two. This is the Ed Brubacher series. I figured, why not grab this? I've always, I don't think I have this issue. So that's cool. This is always fun. And Superman in Action Comics 695. Reason why I picked it up. Starring Lobo. That DC Universe logo. Always, Anytime I find them in dial bins and they're in decent condition, I'm taking them with me. I mean, I'm going to pay first. But I'm taking them with me. Lobo Paramilitary Christmas Special. Always like picking these up. These sell very well during the holidays. So, And it's an awesome book. I remember having this as a kid. I still have my original copy, I think. And it's, I remember reading the hell out of it a bunch of times. The Easter Bunny pays Lobo to go after Santa Claus. I didn't even know they made a comic of this. Shaun of the Dead, number three. And I love this. Me and my wife love this movie. Uh, and uh, fortunately, they didn't have one, one and two. I was hoping he would, but he, but he did have number four. That's pretty cool. So basically, like I guess this guy I bought stuff for before at like shows and stuff, and he had an ad up, and I think he, this was like books that were just found like in a storage room like in a storage unit and he didn't even really go through them either so anything that was good which when i i went through everything and i found what i thought was good you'll see i have more to go but i'm just showing you telling you what the deal is so i wish they had one and two in there that would have been awesome but he didn't now i have to go look for them <laughs> The West Coast Avengers, number 46. First appearance of the Great Lake Avengers. Pretty cool. This is an awesome one. I, and uh, this is... Uh, anytime I find these with Super Cheap, I'll always pick this up. Avengers West Coast, 94. First appearance of Rhodey as War Machine. So that's pretty cool. I guess, uh, yeah, in, in Iron Man, in that first War Machine issue, it's Tony Stark. So I don't know what the scheduling was or any like how when this came out after that issue or whatever, but this is the first time Rhodey is in that. This is awesome too. This is a good book to pick up if you ever see it. And the Dobbins Secret Wars number two from the 2015 series. First appearance of the villain of the series, God Emperor Doom. Punisher Warzone number 41. The last issue in the series, the countdown. I figured I'd grab that. Captain Marvel number two. Unfortunately, they didn't have number one, but I always like this cover. Kind of like an homage to the, to the Rosie the Riveter character. It's a cool cover. Happy to grab that. This is a nice David. Now, speaking of David Finch, not Mark Silvestri. This is an awesome David Finch Wonder Woman cover. Uh, Wonder Woman 36 from the new 52. Infinity Inc. 25. The reason why I picked it up, it's the McFarlane issues. So I got that. And then we got number 31. Just some random issues. I grabbed all the ones that basically had McFarlane on a title. I have a couple of them. I have to like look it up and see how many he did. Number 34. And then number 35. And the cool thing about this, let's open up 35. So Dizuniga, not Dzunga, uh is the anchor. McFarlane doesn't ink his own work really until like I think he inks his work in Alien that Alien one shot he did. Look at that McFarlane cape flow. I mean like it's so not the McFarlane we know yet but like you see little touches there's a McFarlane face you know, the anchors, they, they don't bring justice to his artwork. There's some McFarlane capage, more McFarlane cape. Look at, like, here we go. Let me see if I can find it. There was a good one in here. That's why I, grabbed, I opened it. Here we go. Look at that McFarlane cape. This is like the first appearance of Spawn, really. I'm kidding. Just don't know. <laughs> Let's see. Look at that. That's a McFarlane cape right there. So, yeah, pretty cool. So, the big one you want to look for is the Mr. Bones first appearance. I don't know what... I, I forgot what issue number it is, but... It's probably one of the ones in between these. But, you know, happy to grab them for, you know, less than a buck each. X-Men number 24, the newsstand. It's like a nice, fine condition copy. Happy to grab it. 
awesome cover. This book has a little, always had a little bit of value. This is iconic Rogue Gambit cover. But thanks to the X-Men 97 series, this issue blew up. And it's a newsstand. Speaking of newsstand, X-Men number 30 in a newsstand. I had to grab that. That's the wedding of Jean Grey and Scott Summers. And then speaking of more newsstand, Uncanny X-Men 275. Had to grab this one. I'm going to crack it. Crack a lack it open. Look at that newsstand. Iconic Jim Lee cover. You know, I think this is like really where he peaks with the X-Men. But, you know, before he takes over the X-Men... Com, you know, does X-Men number one and everything. Because by the time he does X-Men number one, after a couple of those issues, you could already see he's, like, farming out his work to, like, you know, he's got his little underlings. He was already setting up Wildcats with Image. You could kind of see he was, like, after, like, issue four or five, you could see the art quality kind of dipping. But I feel like he was giving his all around this time of Uncanny X-Men. Happy to find that. Speaking of, uh, an, of... <laughs> this is a not a good cover, but I had to grab it. Xena Warrior Princess number one, the J. Scott Campbell variant. And uh, what's cool about this, I'm going to open this just to show you guys something. This has the promo poster inside. I'm not going to unfold it because I don't want to ruin it. But it's the, you know, it's a fold out poster as well. I thought it was a tear out or anything, but I guess whoever had this book originally you know, got the promo poster from the shop or something. So that's pretty cool. Happy to get it. Like I said, not his best work, but still pretty cool. All right. Got a couple more awesome ones for you. Goose Rider number 28, sealed in the poly bag. First appearance of the Midnight Sun. Pretty awesome. Goose Rider number 66, just a later issue. Anytime I see them from the doll bin, I'm going to grab them. Ghost Rider 67, starring Gambit. Ghost Rider number 75. And then the, the latest issue I have from this, series ends at like 93. Ghost Rider 86 with the weird funky costume that he wears towards the end of the series. All right. This is pretty awesome. Grimjack number 26. Key significance of this book, anytime I see it, especially if I find it at Dalvin, I'm going to grab it. It's the first Ninja Turtle comic in color. That's right. Let's, let's take a look at this. So, yeah, look at that. Ninja Turtles now in color. They were not in color yet until this. I could be wrong. You could correct me. Maybe there was like a reprint with the cover. The first cover uh, or whatever. I don't know. But... This is technically the first in, in colored interiors or whatever of Ninja Turtles. So that's pretty cool. And also it's kind of a crazy cover for Grimjack. So it's easy. Well, thankfully they have that on top. So, you, you know, if you're looking through those dollar pins and you don't want to keep, you just want to see the top. So you're going to find that one in there. WCW number five. Anytime I didn't even know this comic existed until a couple of years ago. It was a series that came out in the early 90s from Marvel. And uh, I have issue one and three, so I'm just slowly chipping away at the series. Really don't want to, uh, if I find them in dollar bins, I'll pick them up or whatever. Uh, just awesome photo cover with Sting. I'm not sure, is that Rick Rude? I'm, yeah, duh, Rude Awakened. And there's Mick Foley, Mankind, or he could be Cactus Jack there, or Dude Love. Or he could just be Mick Foley. That's pretty awesome. Found another one of these. That's awesome. Barbaric number one. Again, awesome book to get. Awesome book to find in the doll bin. Del May Speaking of awesome, these are video game books. Anytime I see these, I'll pick them up, especially in the doll bin. Devil May Cry, book one, the black and white variant. And Devil May Cry, book, book two, Super Beast. That's pretty awesome. Far, uh, Far Sector, number one. That was pretty awesome. That was a book that came out uh, a couple years, uh, you know, I don't know, like 2019, 2020, I think. And this book kind of blew up a bit. You know, obviously all the speculation, everything, new Green Lantern. She might be in the new Green Lantern series that's going to come out on, like, Max HBO or something. I figured why not grab one. Pretty cool. De um, ooh. Speaking of end-of-series books, let's show these. Doom number 43 and Doom, the last issue of the Doom series, which is Doom 2009, Doom 44. I found the, t these recently, actually, at a convention I went to not too long ago. 
And uh, these are hard to get, but you know, going through this, what's cool about going through like these big collections with like, who knows what it must've been like overstock from a store from years ago. You gotta find stuff like this in there. So that's awesome. Uh, speaking of end of series issues, Deathstroke number 57, almost, you know, those last couple issues of that series in the 90s. And then I found another Deathstroke number 60. Uh, you know, you just saw that a little earlier in the video. Uh, what's cool, you know, it's a, it's still in great condition. It needs a cleaning, definitely. Like, I, I imagine all that's, uh, someone who knows how to clean these books would do a good job getting rid of that. So happy to grab that. And then the last issue of this haul, do me a favor if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, leave a comment if you haven't done already, smash that subscribe button, become part of the little com conversation. Okay, let's do this. Darkhawk 49. Pretty awesome. Really nice condition book. The, the, it's not the last issue of the series. The, I was hoping it was going to be in there. It wasn't, but whatever. Darkhawk number 50 is the big one. But I was looking this up. This book still sells for a, like ridiculous money. There's people wanting like 70, 80 bucks for it. Eh, it might be a little lot crazy, but I did see it sell for like 35 to 40. So that's awesome. I have like issues like the later issue, like late 30s and up to 45. I do not have 46, 47, 48 or 50. So that's pretty cool though. I'll keep my eyes out for those and build that up and get them all. Get all the Dark Hawk. Everyone loves Dark Hawk. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, this was an awesome, huge haul for you guys. I hope you like what you saw. If you haven't, uh, you know, so do me a favor. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. Smash that subscribe button. You're going to see a previous video here. You're going to see a previous video there. You're going to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell for notifications. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.